Uh, I'm David Hendler. I'm the Chief Financial Officer of Sony Pictures Entertainment. I join my Sony colleagues and welcome you here today and appreciate you taking the time. Throughout the morning, you have heard about Sony Pictures' strong and diverse lines of business. Michael also shared some high-level guidance for the future. Now, I would like to take you through a more detailed view of our plan to meet our goals. We will start with a review of our historical financial performance. I will then go into more detail about our commitment to margin improvement, cost control and financial discipline, risk management, and our focus on strategic priorities. And finally, I will look at our future guidance. But before I go on, let me remind you that adjusted OIBITDA is a non-US GAAP measure. And depreciation and amortization excludes amortization of film costs. As you can see here, year after year, SPE has been a major source of revenue and profit for Sony Corporation. In fact, we have met or exceeded our profit performance targets that we have set in conjunction with Sony Corporation for nine out of the last 10 years, which demonstrates that we maintain stability in a hits-driven business. We're able to achieve this record by balancing a highly diversified portfolio of businesses. Note, however, that while our annual earnings have been fairly consistent, our quarter-to-quarter -quarter earnings have a much different pattern based on the nature of our business. Here, you see those same five years of operating income broken down by quarter. The variability in the quarterly results is a normal course in a creative business. Let me give you an example. Last year, we released Amazing Spider-Man in the US on July 3rd. That means we took nearly the full expense of the film's theatrical marketing in our first financial quarter ended June 30th, while taking nearly all the box office revenue for the film in our second financial quarter, July through September. Next year, Spider-Man will be released on May 3rd, which means quarter four of the prior year will absorb much of the theatrical marketing costs, while quarter one will benefit from box office revenues. Film release dates are driven by the optimal timing for each individual title. As you can see, no single quarter properly reflects our annual profitability. We recently reported on a yen basis a second quarter that was down relative to last year's quarter two. However, we anticipate that our full year operating income will be essentially flat to last year. Entertainment is a year-round business, and we manage it in 12-month cycles. One of our key strategies underpinning our annual performance is diversity. By maintaining a wide variety of income streams, Sony Pictures is able to manage the ebbs and flows of any single business territory. For example, let's look at a breakdown of our revenue by business line. Since 2004, our television businesses, TV productions, and media networks have grown from 28% of the studio's revenue to 39%, a trend that we expect to continue. And given that the television businesses typically yield higher margins, they have grown to represent an even greater proportion of our operating income. There are two key points here. The first is that a substantial percentage of our profits are coming from the highest growth businesses. That gives us great capacity to drive future profit growth. The second is that this mix enables us to balance our high potential but riskier content businesses, such as motion pictures and broadcast television production, against our more stable, lower risk businesses, such as media networks and cable television production. In addition, our business has become increasingly global. In fiscal year ending 2004, we're only about driving a third of our revenue from international markets. By our last fiscal year, this had grown to over 50%. You've already heard from Amy, Steve, and others today that we expect this trend to continue and SPE is shaping its business to capitalize on that opportunity. At a more detailed level, we have seen further diversification across specific regions, which helps insulate SP against variability in any single territory. Our revenue by source depicts the same well-balanced picture. From 2004 to 2013, newer revenue streams, namely advertising and television affiliate fees, have grown to balance our more traditional businesses of content licensing and home entertainment. This diversification provides further stability for the bottom line. Despite a meaningful downturn over the past five years in physical DVD sales across the industry, Sony Pictures has continued to grow profits by maintaining the diversity of revenue sources. Advertising is another really good example of this. When advertising markets are booming, 
Motion pictures face higher marketing costs, but this increase is mitigated by the higher advertising fees garnered by our media networks and content licensing businesses. So you can see how we are actively managing our revenue mix through diversified businesses, territories, and sources. But we're equally focused on managing our operating margins. With our diversified portfolio of TV and film businesses, our approach to driving margin, higher margins is twofold. First, we will continue investing in our higher margin businesses which have the capacity for growth. And second, we will further improve the economics of our more mature businesses. Let's take a deeper look at both of these. Our plan to build on our high margin businesses includes carefully targeting growth opportunities for our global networks. In addition to driving higher margins for the overall studio, the network's business itself can achieve operational efficiencies from greater scale over the long term. We will also further leverage the success we've had in cable TV production, which requires moderate capital, pays back faster than media networks, and generates relatively high margins. And building on the success in cable, we will continue to invest in broadcast productions. As evidenced by our recent success with the blacklist, broadcast series require higher capital, but hits with global appeal are extremely profitable as more seasons are produced and downstream revenues grow. Additionally, we will continue to invest in the growing animation business where the production costs, particularly talent, are low relative to the potential payoff of the box office and in the downstream markets. We will also build on the strength of our worldwide acquisitions team and their repeated ability to identify small films and direct-to-video projects with the potential for breakout success. This low investment, low risk business can generate disproportionately high profits when a film or video hits big with audiences. This investment strategy is not new for Sony Pictures. From 2007 to 2013, we have identified over $400 million in our media networks and we've committed hundreds of millions more to increase our ownership of GSN and MSM India. In recent years, we've also invested nearly $1 billion in television production for broadcast and cable customers, over $750 million building our animation business, and over $1 billion in independently produced films through our worldwide acquisitions group. Our ability to deliver returns has earned us the continued support of Sony Corporation with our investment strategy. The second part of our margin improvement plan focuses on boosting the economics of our mature businesses, particularly motion pictures. To do this, we're setting more aggressive profit thresholds for our films, we're maximizing the value of our content library, we're optimizing our distribution infrastructure, and maintaining cost control and financial discipline. Our green light process is a key tool for selecting films that meet our requirements for profitability and return on capital. We continuously refine the green light process to reflect current film economics and market conditions. Earlier today, you heard Michael describe how we evaluate our green lights on a line-by-line -line basis. Let me reiter reiterate this, as we believe it's a key to our strategy. We're vigilant in driving down production, marketing, and distribution costs, and we take a hard line and look at every film's revenue potential. At the same time, We've also raised the bar for expected profitability and slate return, despite an increasingly competitive market for films. Over the last several years, we've implemented more aggressive hurdle rates, a full allocation of all overhead, and an analysis of each film for its expected impact on overall slate profitability. This high standard for success requires not just the diligence of our own creative executive, it equally requires the collaboration of our partners. In particular, we have restructured our deals with talent so that they fit with our own goals of maximizing profits. With few exceptions, we negotiate talent deals so contingent compensation is predominantly earned post-cast break-even. And we penalize talent for budget overruns so they are well incentivized to control costs. We're also driving incremental value from our content library, which includes over 3,500 films and TV series. We're taking advantage of our new content formats, such as 4K. We're creating new innovative windows to drive higher margin transactions. We're licensing the growing number of digital platforms. We're leveraging our international formats across all of our territories. And we're meeting the increasing global demand for our premium content. 
The hallmark of a major studio in a world -class is a world-class distribution organization. To maximize profitability, we op optimize distribution in two ways. As you heard earlier, we drive full utilization of this infrastructure, particularly with our worldwide acquisition titles and by distributing third-party product. We also believe that while our reach needs to be global, our headcount does not. We evaluate each territory to determine the most efficient operating model. As you can see from this map, we have implemented joint ventures and sub-distribution deals all over the world and anticipate that we'll have more in the future. To give you a sense of impact, regional joint ventures reduce our overhead costs by 30 to 50% in a given territory. While we continually seek ways to improve our margins, it is also important that we maintain a focus on absolute profit and risk management. One of the ways we drive incremental profit is by distributing content on behalf of third parties. In many of these deals, we are required to record all of the revenue, but only a portion of the profit. However, these distribution deals provide a low risk way for the studio to leverage its existing operations and generate additional income. Moreover, our co-production arrangements frequently require us to record all of a film's revenue against a share of profits as well. While this can result in unattractive margins, these deals are strategically selected to bring us highly profitable films such as the James Bond franchise. Finally, by taking on third-party financing for our film slates, we're able to better manage both cash and risk, but at the same time, they will dilute the operating margins as we share our profit with investors. It's also important to note that our strategic investments, which will drive future profits and higher margins, are frequently margin dilutive in the near term. Perhaps the best example of this is the network's business. Networks are a long-term investment, which on average take four to five years to reach profitability. However, as these investments mature, their margins will naturally increase. As we illustrate here, the average operating margin for networks up to five years old is negative. By contrast, the average operating margin of a network at least six years old is far more attractive. We launch new channels, understanding that a negative short-term impact is often required to drive margins and build asset value for the future. In order to achieve our aggressive targets, we're also committed to cost cutting and financial discipline, as you've heard many times today. Cost savings are not new to Sony Pictures. We've been restructuring our business since the decline of DVD sales in 2007. Our previous initiatives were focused on operational efficiencies and overhead reductions, as you heard from Michael earlier. The next phase in our ongoing cost reduction program was launched last year. We're now in the process of eliminating approximately $250 million of costs from the business. These reductions have already started and will continue through our fiscal year ending 2016. This plan was built from the bottom up and is focused on two key, areas, two key areas for cost savings. We have a wide range of overhead and operational efficiency initiatives, which are expected to collectively drive run rate savings of over 150 million by the end of 2016. For example, as you saw in the previous map, we're continuing to streamline international operations with additional JVs and sub-distribution deals. We're driving down costs, distribution costs, particularly for physical media, and we've taken a hard look at headcount to identify reductions. Additionally, we are driving cost savings in procurement, where we anticipate run rate improvements of $100 million by the end of fiscal year 2016. We're rebidding contracts and letting our suppliers know that to secure a commitment from us, they need to come to the table with the most aggressive pricing possible. In addition to these two key savings categories, we're also undertaking further reductions in theatrical marketing where we see opportunity in areas such as media, print, and outdoor. And we're not stopping there. As Michael mentioned earlier, we're kicking off another extensive overhead review with the support of an independent third party to ensure that no opportunity is overlooked. Beyond margin improvements and cost control, it's also critical for us to manage risk. There are three key components. One maintaining a diverse and well-balanced portfolio of businesses. Two, keeping our film slate highly diversified. And three, pursuing attractive slate financing deals. As you saw earlier, Sony Pictures business is diversified by business line, geography, and revenue source. 
you also heard about our portfolio of labels. But it's not just about creative diversity. Each of these labels is unique in its approach to investing in content and in its risk reward profile. This gives us the ability to construct a well-balanced slate. Finally, we leverage favorable slate financing to further mitigate our creative risk. Over the past eight years, we've had five slate financing deals, a demonstration that the financial markets have long considered our motion pictures an attractive bet. And we're continuing to pursue new opportunities in slate fin financing. Based on the priorities of the individual businesses and Sony Pictures as a whole, we're constantly evaluating our allocation of capital. In order to fuel long-term growth, this allocation targets three key drivers. Content development, with a focus on our most profitable formats and genres. Media networks, in order to take advantage of the fantastic growth opportunities in the global market. And digital initiatives, which target more profitable models for nearly all aspects of the business. Now I'd like to walk you through the guidance. With respect to fiscal year ending 2014 on a yen basis, Sony Pictures year-on-year -year sales are expected to increase and operating income is expected to be essentially flat. Looking ahead to our fiscal year 2015, we project revenue of 8.4 billion, adjusted operating income before depreciation and amortization of 755 million with a corresponding margin of 9% and operating income of $630 million, giving us an operating income margin of 7.5%. Taking a longer-term view, we expect Sony Pictures' annual revenue growth from our physical year ending 13 to 17 to be in the low to mid-single digits, which includes motion pictures, flat to slightly down, television pr productions in the mid to high single digits, and media networks in the low to mid-teens. It's worth noting that our fiscal year 2013 was an extraordinary year for our motion picture group, and that gives us a very high basis to calculate its anticipated revenue growth rate. We expect an adjusted operating income before depreciation and amortization growth rate in the high single digits, and we expect an operating income growth rate in the high single to low double digits. All three categories in the picture segment are profitable, and we expect their profitability to improve going forward. So, to wrap up, let me leave you with a reminder of our key priorities. Sony Pictures will maximize the value of our content, particularly in growing digital and international markets. We're going to invest in a high margin and high growth businesses, particularly television networks. We're going to maintain strict cost control and financial discipline. We're going to improve our margins while maintaining a focus on absolute profitability and risk management and we're going to create incremental value that's only possible through one Sony. Thank you for your time. It's been a pleasure to share our business with you today, and I look forward to an ongoing dialogue with you.